Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Mr. Frank Grief, you want to just uh, tell us where we are? We're in Mayfair, but we're at Mayfair, Buddha Box. Yeah, we're at Buddha Box. Buddha Box in Mayfair, uh, literally right in the heart of uh, probably the richest district in London. Um, yeah, it's a lovely facility. It's, it's where we're based out of. I've been here for a few months. Um, so, yeah, we're just getting a bit of lockdown training in. Yeah. Well, Happy New Year as well. And to you, mate, and to you. How's it all going with uh, David Adler? Obviously, he went to uh, Dubai like the rest of the UK. Uh, he's back in training now. Uh, any kind of updates on when David could potentially be out, Frank? Uh, we're hoping for sort of mid to late February, early March time. Obviously, everything's up in the air at the moment because of, of current lockdown conditions and, and you know new waves of viruses and whatever else. But yeah, uh, listen, I mean, for us, it's going to be similar to the back end of last year. I mean, David Box on the first lockdown show in July last year. Um, he was out another two times after that. So we pretty much spent six months in camp. I, I, ne I, I never like that word because I think, you know, being a professional sportsman, a professional boxer is a, is a sort of five-day-a-week job anyway. You should always be training. Mm. Um, so for us, it's literally just the case. He's had a nice little break. He had a few weeks off before Christmas. Dubai for the new year. Um, he's had a nice little break for us. It's now a gentle build-up towards sort of mid to late February, early March, and we'll be ready to go when the phone eventually goes, be that March or April or May, whenever it's going to be, we'll be ready to go on that first shot. How do you reflect on this 2020? Yeah, I think, I think we had a really good year. Um, obviously, he made his debut the, the, the previous December. Uh, we started working together sort of March, April time last year. Um, and... Certainly, in my opinion, you could see the progression as, as you look back through the three fights. You can see David getting better, improving in all the areas, his footwork getting better, his shot selection's better, certainly a lot more patient. Um, I mean, it's baby steps at the moment, but he's, he's got everything he needs to go, potentially, all the way to the top. Of course, you're his trainer, so you're going to be a little bit biased. But in this heavyweight division, this current current division, why are you so convinced that David Adelaide one day will get to the top? Because yeah, I think he's got all the attributes. He's got all the tools that he needs. He, he can punch like he's 18 stone and he can move like he's 13 stone. Um, you know, I mean, look, there's a lot that's talked about size. Um, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of people asking us, is David big enough? Um, you know, I say to anyone, look, ask anyone who's sparred with him or ask anyone who's been in the ring with him if he can punch. And he, like I say, look, he punches like he's 18 stone. But there's a, there's a lot of guys out in the division at the moment. And I'm not, I'm not going to get into specific names or whoever else, but there's a lot of guys that are carrying too much weight. Um, and they kind of see being a heavyweight as an excuse to be fat or to be overweight, to effectively carry shit weight. Now, if you're Linford Christie looking to run 100 metres, you're not going to run that 100 metres sub 10 seconds carrying two stone of extra body fat. Um, David's an athlete. He's, a, he's, an, he's an absolute athlete. He's a full-on athlete. Um, and I think, as I say, when you, when you combine all those attributes in with the boxing ability, the punch power, the movement, the athleticism, the speed, he's got everything you need to get to the top. Also, I think watching on TV might give you a false uh, impression because when you come up close to him, as you said, there's no really excess body fat on him, but he's a big unit when you look at him. He is. He's a big lump. Yeah, as I say, look, if you look at him like frame for frame, um, you know, there's guys out there in the top ten in the world now that, that, that are even maybe an inch or so shorter than Dave. They're two stone heavier. But when you actually break it down and look at them with their shirts off on the scales, Dave is no smaller than them in terms of his frame, his size, his shoulders, his, his muscle mass. He's just not carrying two stone of fat. Um, and, and not carrying that two stone of fat is going to enable someone who's as athletic as Dave to get in and out and hit people with shots, they're, they're not going to be used to this speed. Um, he's exceptionally fast for a heavyweight. I think we've already seen that he's got, he's got some real speed. And once he actually learns the patience and learns to set stuff up properly, uh, we're going to see some really explosive one-punch knockouts as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's an exciting start to his career because uh, 
obviously he's on TV, he's, he's getting more known, etc. Produced some really good wins as well. And of course, what everyone's talking about, he's been in the ring with already Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. So if you don't mind, give me a little bit of insight on how those spars were, as much as you can for David with Anthony and Tyson. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's from my perspective, obviously, um, the fact that David's in there and he's not, he's not being overawed by them at all. You know, I mean, he's not sparring them after they've lost world titles. They're not ex-world champions. They're the, the two current world heavyweight champions. And he's in there and he's more than holding his own to the point where they want us back for sparring on a regular basis. So, you know, it, it has, the door has to swing both ways. It's good for them. It's good for us. Um, in terms of an education, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's better to, to drop the level of your sparring down. You don't want to spar Anthony Joshua week in, week out. Same as you don't want to spar Tyson Fury week in, week out. But... In terms of David's confidence as well, the fact that he knows that he's been in there and he's been competitive with those guys, um, that helps you just bring you up. A, a lot of a lot of fighting is about mentality. Same as any other sports. Look, you know, you get a second division footballer, stick him over your local park, he's going to look like Diego Maradona. He hasn't got the mentality to do it on fight night, as it were. Uh, and that's the good thing about Dave is that he's been in those environments. He's been in there with those top fighters. Um, and if anything, he's growing from that mentally, and that's going to help him in the long run. So, Frank, in terms of yourself, is it just David you're currently working with? And I know Eddie Kelly is involved in the team as well. Yeah, it's yeah, it's literally just Dave. I mean, it's uh, I've I've done it before where I've had I've had multiple fighters at the same time, um, and to be honest, it's it's heavily labour intensive as a trainer. You you not only the stuff in the gym, but you're always looking at stuff outside the gym. You know, obviously you're involved in the strength and conditioning side the diet side as well um so yeah it's, it's pretty full on and yeah I, I, at the moment i'm not really looking for my stable to grow not it's again not with current conditions as well works difficult um so yeah it's just it's just me dave and, and eddie chips in with his uh, with his bells of wisdom so your, your full focus is on David Adelaide. So what is in store for 2021? I know you, you don't want to name specific opponents, etc. But it's going to be around that kind of southern area English scene to start with, I'd imagine. And then moving on to the back end of the year, perhaps like a, a British title or, or those guys at that level. Is that fair enough? Yeah, I, I, I think it's totally fair, to be honest with you. I mean, again, because of Corona, for the, this has been dragging on for a year already. Um, there's going to be a lack of other people coming through, sort of people behind Dave. Um, and there's already been a couple of retirements. Obviously, Dave Allen's gone. There's been a couple of other people that have retired that was ahead of Dave in the, in the so-called rankings. So, yeah, I mean, looking, looking realistically, um, you know, I think we have another six, eight rounder and then, and then we're looking at area titles. A lot, a lot of it's going to be governed on, obviously, how many shows we get. Uh, what goes on in terms of Corona, how many shows there's going to be. Realistically speaking, it'd be a great year. If we get out four or five times, that's another good year. And, and uh, you know, we'll go where we need to go. I, I've, I'm fully confident in Davies' ability. If, if it's a case of boxing for the British title at the end of the year, or if it's the end of the following year, I, I don't mind. Provided we're, we're doing the right things in the gym, we're doing the right things in sparring, it will kind of take care of itself, and it's a bit of an organic process. Sometimes you can overthink it. Um, you know, we'll just we'll just roll with the punches and see where we see where we end up. As long as we're active, that's the most important thing. Well, if he is active and uh, keeps producing these kind of big performances, then those big fights will come. As I said, end, end of this year, early start to next year is probably realistic for that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as I say, look, uh, in, in terms of his development. Um, I mean, we haven't really seen it on fight night yet because he hasn't he hasn't been pushed out of second gear yet. Um, but in terms of his development, I'm seeing things I'm seeing new things from him every week. We're always working on stuff. Um, I'm a little bit of a I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, a bit maybe a bit OCD ish. Um, See when there was three seconds got on the clock and he reset it. But mate, you can't. It's just, it's just important. You can't reset the timer on fight night. You know, it's, it's, it, this is this is big things. Um, but yeah, you know, like, like, I'm a perfectionist, and I'm I'm never happy with the stuff that we're doing. It's all there's always room for improvement. And the good thing is that Dave's mentality is that he wants to get better. He doesn't see anything really as a chore. Maybe maybe the burpees are a bit of a chore, but you know, uh, he's, as I say, look, it's all about mentality. His mentality is good. Uh, he wants to keep learning. He's keen to learn. And as long as that sort of dynamic continues, then. You know what? We'll, we'll kind of find ourselves where we find ourselves, uh, and a lot's going to be governed, like I say, by Corona and how many shows there are, and also the lack of the lack of credible opponents. 
you know I mean already you, you go on box rec and there's there's literally like there's maybe six or seven names at the top that obviously we're not looking at no. and then underneath that David's a win away from fighting any of those guys realistically speaking Gormans Wardleys etc yeah, yeah but re- relatively I mean I would say probably Gorman and Wardley are, are, are a little step in front of Dave at the moment but then like you come under that you've got Alex Dickinson the Mark Bennett's of this world people that are 7 and 1 8 and 2 the guys that have got ambition to go and maybe maybe box for an English title maybe win that and, and get a British title shot that's, that's their world title shot yeah. now those guys are already sitting there they haven't boxed for a year Another six months down the line, are they still going to be around? We just don't know. We don't know the way, the way the current climate is. So it could well be we're sitting there at the end of the year and it has to be a Nathan Gorman and not because I'm particularly singling out Nathan Gorman because I want him or whatever else, but it may well be that that's the only, that's the only viable opposition. So we, we're just going to have to see how the, how the rest of the year pans out. Well, just to, to end, given obviously his natural talent that he's progressing uh, every day under you, combined with that mentality that you've talked about, Will David Adelaide go to the top? I, I firmly believe he goes to the top, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the old cliche, this is heavyweight boxing. You know, I, the mentality is right. I mean, he's, he's been quoted, he's said it a few times, I'd rather wake up sore than sorry. Um, his mentality is right. There's, uh, under, under no doubt in my mind that on the biggest of occasions, he's going to rise to that. He's not, he's not going to be one of these sort of shrieking violets that, that disappears into himself. He hasn't got that mentality at all. And as you say, you combine that with the natural physical gifts, provided I can bring that out in him, uh, I don't see any reason why I don't go out all the way. Okay. So it should be an exciting journey. Listen, best of luck with David uh, for this year. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have plenty of more catch-ups, but uh, I think this is a, a big year for David's development and then really from 2022 onwards it's uh, in with the big boys so yeah uh, best of luck with the journey and uh, I'm sure we'll catch up soon alright Frank top man thanks so much appreciate it mate is your debt causing you sleepless nights knock your debt out with debt KO and your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night debt KO free impartial advice on all your debt